Hello, good morning to you, and welcome to another edition of our Defense Engineering Series. Um, what we're going to do today is um, we're going to read values from. Um, um, firstly, we're going to write values, our plan values, our plan parameters to a local SQL server, and then um, we're going to also read from that server. Of course, and everything is going to be locally. But um, of course, you know, if you already have your data locally, then um, it's just a, uh, a straightforward matter getting it um, to modeling that is on the cloud. Okay, so what we're going to do today is um, I've already said that. So how we're going to do that is I already have my SCADA application here, um, which is uh, I'm using the SCADA application I'm using is um, Wonderware. It's, this is Apollo Wonderware. So um, this is a job I did um, sometime last year so uh, i'm going to use this one for demonstration it's going to be a very quick one hopefully, hopefully. all right so um we already have these screens here and um, i want to make use of the configuration screen the config screen all right as you can see in this config screen um i'm currently connected to um a, a live plant but for demonstration purposes um i think in the subsequent videos i'm going to show you but i'm already connected um, it's not, I'm not simulating anything here. Uh, everything is live. So what I'm trying to, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read the potentiometer value. Um, there's the potentiometer actually in the panel, in the control panel of um, the plant here. So I'm going to read those values. Remember, um, what I've already done to the potentiometer values is that um, somewhere here, I think um, on the screen, On the scaling part here, this is the uh, programming environment. So um, I've really normalized the value coming at IW98, the potentiometer value coming. Uh, if I do this, if I show you these values, these values are actually coming in the back end, right? I can see this value if I monitor this. See, these are your normal. Um, this is your normal norm X. Um, probably it may not be normal for some persons, um, um, but don't worry. In the subsequent classes, we'll go through that. So currently, I'm receiving. Um, this is my raw potentiometer value, and then I'm normalizing it um, to a range of 0 0.1 with the norm X block, and then I'm scaling it from 0 to 100 percent. So if I turn uh, my potentiometer value, I'm going to do that now. The value is actually changing, right? Currently, I have 27.5 percent. All right, so, um, I'll, I, it's obvious I can see this value, um, in the back end. So, but I want to uh, send this value to um, SCADA, and then from SCADA, I want to log these values into an SQL database, and then from SQL database, um, I can also read it via SCADA in some other location, and that is if your remote, if your database is actually in the cloud. All right, so um, I have this application here. Um, I already said it's Wonderware. And then uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new screen, right? I'm going to create a new screen. Let me see the database. Let me just call it database. And uh, leaving everything default, I'm going to say OK to this. So screen two, if I save this screen two, uh, let me, let's continue. I'm going to um, use that shortly. So I need this exit screen before I forget about it. Um, um, if you don't have the exit button, it's always difficult to exit from um, an open screen. All right, so um, I have this. Let me get a link to the config screen. Let me get a link to the config screen. All well, let me just do that. Let's do this. So I know from this page, from this um, uh, screen too, currently I'm going to re um, rename it um, shortly. I'm going to close this, just copy the config button, link button to it. All right, so what we're going to do here again is that uh, um, I have two buttons, the config and this one. So um, I want to, um, I, could, I could decide to actually, um, read the values or um, write the values. But uh, what are we going to read, right? We have not even created a database. We don't know 
um, what we're going to where we're getting the data from. So, but let me just prepare the screen and show you. If I go to these data objects, I'm going to get a grid, right? If I get the grid, I will see this grid is going to show me um, in tabular form what I have in my database, right? So this is going to be my visualization of the database, right? Which is also going to be at the back end. Um, you don't want to be going to the database and be looking at what you have there, what you don't have there. So I have the scatter to actually scatter table to actually show me that. All right, so let's log in the values. I want to log in the value of this potentiometer value, right? So, but first of all, I have to read in this value. Let's see whether I am reading this value correctly. Um, I think I am reading the value. It will go to drivers communication. And then I go to drivers, mode bus TCP. I'm reading the mode bus TCP now. And uh, I have a potentiometer value there, I think so. All right, so I have a potentiometer value. This is my the address of my mode bus, um, of my mode bus server. So I'm reading what I have there. Um, this is floating point 44. Um, you may be wondering, why is it 44? Actually, if I go back here and I go to my pointer database, I'm sorry, this video may be very quick for some persons, but um, uh, surely believe me on this. Uh, we're going to get uh, uh, these things in much more detail um, in subsequent videos. So um, what we're going to do, if I look for potentiometer, potentiometer, all right, I have the pot percent, right? That's potentiometer percent. And uh, this is the value I would like to read. If I monitor this again, you see that I have between 7.5 percent, which we saw from the previous um, um, page. So I have 7.5 percent, but it's already connected as an offset value of 88, right? So what we we'll do here is we we'll say it's 8 divided by 2 plus 1, right? 8 divided by 2 gives you 44 plus 1, 45. But because this is a real number, it's going to take 44. Um, it will require 32 bits to be displayed. So, but um, 44 contains 16 bits, 45 contains 16 bits. So, 16 plus 16 is going to give you 32 bits. So, I'm going to read this from FP. That is why I'm reading this from FP uh, colon 44, right? So, you can actually look at the documentation here for um, help on how to actually go through that. But this is FP44. And if I run this, this I think the other page is telling me to see the new page which we created. So let me just call it database. Let me call it database. So if I play this, you will see that I am actually reading the value of 27.5 of the potentiometer. Uh, but let's see that if I go to the config page, I have 27.5 here. So if I'm actually trying and um, turning the potentiometer, so as I turn the potentiometer, you see that my values are actually being changed, right? In percentage. Okay. So now we are very sure and we can read the potentiometer value. Um, what we can do next is that um, um, we want to log in these values, right? Of course, I'm going to only going to log in the potentiometer value, but of course you get the idea that um, you can log in as many values or uh, parameters as you want. All right, so the next thing for us to do, uh, we're going to get, because I'm talking about, I said we're going to create an SQL server. So I'm going to use the SQL data, um, Management Studio. If I open up that, the SQL Management Studio um, is coming up. The SQL Management Studio is coming up. Uh, take some time. Okay. Now, I am going to connect to my um, server name, which is Velocity slash WinCC. This is an instance already created for me. All right, so um, I'm going to connect to this. When I do connect to that, it has some already existing databases. But then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new database, and I'm going to give it, um, you can give it any name, any name that makes sense. But for me here, I'm going to call it Emeka, which is my name. All right, so um, I have a database called Emeka. I'm going to say OK to this. Now, that is the only thing I have created at this point. So I have a database in my um, SQL server, which is going to this um, backward slash WinCC, right? You could see it here. All right, so um, I have a database called Emeka. So what I'm going to do is that I want the values of the potentiometer to actually be logged into that database. All right, so how do we go about that? Firstly, um, because I've created a database, what I want to do here is 
I'm going to go to project and set my project and set my default database in options. All right, so I go to database and then primary, I want to set connection string. I want to set my default database. This is my server name. It is correct. So, and this is a database already on the server and that is also correct. So I'm going to test this connection. It is okay, succeeded. I will say okay to this and okay to that. So the next is go to tax. And then on your trend window, on your trend um, um, parent here, right click and go to insert. So let me call this log. I can call this log one, um, just a name, a description. Um, history format, I want you to get it from the, um, it should connect to a database, right? And I want it to save on, not on the trigger of seconds, um, but whenever there's a change in the, uh, values of um, the potentiometer. All right, so I go to database com um, configuration, and then um, I want you to automatically create this. Right, you could see it's using project default, which we already set in the options um, um, in the options here. So um, I want you to automatically create the database. And for me here, um, do I want it to be called SCADA? Okay, go ahead and call this SCADA one. Right. And SCADA, I already used in my previous um, class. All right, not online class, actually. So um, I don't want to use the default name. I wanted to use this name, SCADA underscore one, and automatically create that for me. I will say okay to this. So um, that should be that. All right, so but in this um, database slash ERP, I also want to connect my um, database here. Um, I want it to be... Microsoft OLEDB provider for SQL Server. This is what I'm doing. So I will say okay to this. Um, my server name I'm going to select. If you don't find it, you can actually refresh. But I think it should be there. I've been working with this for <laughs> quite some time now, so it should be there. So I'm waiting for it to pop up. Let's see, let's see, we're waiting for it to pop up. Okay, pop, up, pop, up, pop, up, pop, up. All right. It's going to come up and take some seconds to do so. I'll be even up to a minute now. No, I don't think we are. Find this. I think I have to pause the video and then just connect when it goes. Okay, so we have it here Global City backward slash WinCC. I wanted to use Windows NT Integrated Security and then the, the database I created on the server. Remember, we created a Mac on the server, so I should find it here. Okay, I test the connection again, succeeded. That is okay. It's okay. Connection name cannot be empty. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, let's call it, um, what I'm going to call this, example. Let's call it example DB. Okay. The example DB, this is going to, this is okay for it. So what next, um, think we are done with this. So whenever this value, um, but we are not actually done. I have not actually said what parameter I actually want to be logging into my database. So if I come to this tag name, I right click and insert tag. I want to read my potentiometer values. So I'm going to read my potentiometer values and then I'm going to say okay to this. So now we are done. So I save this. I save this sheet number one. Okay. I save this and then you can say okay to this. So, so what I expect this thing to do is to create a table name for me in my database of Mecca called SCADA underscore one. So if I go to config, you see I have the value of 44.7. So what we're going to do is we're going to be changing this value. You see, right? Whatever value I, I, wherever I told the potentiometer, I have the equivalent value in percentage, right? Um, let me go to 100%. Each of these values I expect to be logged into my SQL database, right? So if I get to 100%, and then that is 100.8. Uh, 
I'll go to zero. I can also go to zero. Yes, and then stay somewhere in between. Okay, so um, we know that we are written these values, but um, let's find out what are these values they were actually logged in into our um, SQL server. So if I exit this, and then I check my SQL server, my SQL database, I refresh this, and I see whether it, any table at scalar underscore one was created for me. Yes, I have value, I have a table scalar underscore one, but I still can select top 100, top 1000 rows, um, see what I'm gonna find those values. Right, well, the values are all here, right? You could see I have every value um, logged, which appeared in the uh, potentiometer space, um, logged into the the um, database. So you could see, I think there was a place we got 100 with this. We didn't find those values, I think. Okay, yes. Got to 100 and then we've got to zero here, yeah. right? And then we are somewhere currently in between. All right, so you could see by your values, we are actually logged in into your um, SQL server, right? Your SQL database. So again, uh, remember we created a screen here and then we said we, we could actually read the values as they have been changed, maybe remotely somewhere else, uh, right? Somewhere else because. If your um, table, your SQL server database is on the cloud, then um, you can actually read this thing, whatever. So if I open up this um, um, grid, and then my data source, I want it to come from the database, and then I say advanced, sorry, I don't need anything there, I can leave everything before there. So data source, I don't want it to use the default name, I don't want it to automatically create, I'm not logging values, I'm not writing to the database, I want to read the values of the database. So. I want you to read from this table, SCADA1, right? So I say okay to this. And then my column name, um, I want this to be called, you could call it potentiometer, or what? Let's leave it at that. But for this field, it must correspond to what you actually have there. So I must make sure that the name tallies with what I have in the table. That is the, co the table column. So if I say okay to this, um, you could show ID, um, ID column fine, like one, two, three, four, five, and then you could also allow for um, column um, for certain of the columns. So if I say okay to this, and then I close this, you would see that I can read those values from the database. So if I do this, I hit okay to that. Um, expect to see all the values. Okay, so as you can see. Um, I'm seeing all these values, again, coming from the database. And also know that these values are updated automatically, right? They are up updated automatically. Um, you don't have to be doing this manually. Um, anytime there is a change from the potentiometer value, it locks into this table, and then you can actually find it. Um, you can also create a trend for it and do whatever you want to do with this um, uh, um, particular table you have here. So that will be all for today. Thank you and have a wonderful day.